Hey guys, it's Mike Chen here in Singapore. You know, before I came, I asked a lot of you guys about what I should eat and where I should eat it. And there are a few food items that almost everybody said that I definitely need to try. So that's what I'm gonna do. And the first thing we're gonna eat is considered a national dish of Singapore. It's also sort of a cross-cultural dish between India and China. So let's go eat a curry fish head. And to experience fish head curry for the first time, well, to be honest, this is my first time experiencing fish head on its own as a dish. Anyway, according to my friends, this restaurant, Muthu's, is one of the best at making this dish. And before we get started, I just wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. And if you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 15,000 classes in basically everything from business to art to photography to YouTubing. Actually, I think I have a course on there soon. And they're gonna give away a two month free trial for the first 700 people that sign up through the show and I'm gonna have more information for you guys in my description box also at the end of this video all right here we go let's just take a piece of meat whoa that is a big fish head I am kind of glad that I can't see the eyes right there this is a sea bass and I got a large size and to show you guys how big it is my hand came and cover this head the fish head itself Oh my goodness. I estimate, I mean, that's bones and everything in there, but that's at least five pounds just ahead. I see a lot of spices, cilantro, there's pineapple inside the curry as well. It looks really good because there seemed to be a ton of meat on his head. I mean, all that, that's good meat. All right, I'm just gonna get started with more of the neck part. That came off really easy. That looks delicious. It's flaky, it's delicate. This looks like a really tender part of the fish. I'm gonna just dunk it in the curry. Oh, that thing is just falling apart. Oh no. Now, I know why people eat fish head. Like, my parents love fish head. My grandparents love fish head because it is one of the most tenderest parts of a fish's body. Cheers. Oh. Oh. Mm. The fish itself, ridiculously tender. Really clean flavors, not fishy whatsoever. But I, I gotta give kudos to the curry. That curry is spectacular. Mm. First of all, that's really spicy. It's a subtle starchy flavor that's either mashed chickpeas or maybe the okra. I think with this curry, I like anything that jumps inside. Look, there is a ridiculous amount of meat just kind of surrounding the head area itself. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of the rice and just add a chunk of the fish meat in there. And then give it a piece of the pineapple. Oh, it's a good bite. That was a good bite. Pineapple's juicy, sweet and tart, but that juice, when it, when it mixes with the fish meat, it really highlights the curry flavor. Oh, and check this out. The, this is my plate. It's a tray with a banana leaf on it. You know, come to think of it, this is the first time in the history of the show I've ever sniffed a plate, and it'll probably be one of the only times I'm gonna tell you it smells really good. Let's take a look at some of the ingredients inside this curry. This is all great meat right here. Got fish, okra, pineapples. This is so much fun. Normally, you think of a fish head, you might not imagine a lot of meat, but this is a meaty head. Now, I don't know if this fish did a lot of above the neck workouts, but it is it is massive. And the color meat, it's just, look at this. This is just like one piece of it. That's all good eating. And some of the best meats is right on the cheek. So I'm just gonna dig into this fish right here. That is really tender meat. I mean, there's Cantonese dishes that would only use the cheek meat. Dunk it in some curry, grab some rice. Now that's a really cheeky bite. There's more here. It's just lift that up and it's right below the eyes. All that. That's what you want in a fish head. If you can get past that, you know, it's a head and it has eyes, the fish head is actually one of the most desired parts of the fish. And let me just show you guys how much meat is, is on this head. I'm gonna top all the meat. This is all meat all around the head. I mean, look at this. That's all good stuff. This is just one side of the head. And ton of meat. And besides the spice, we could taste a little tamarind. It's a little citrusy from the pineapple. I mean, it's just fantastic. This is just one side of the fish. That's pretty much done. And when you flip, look at, look at, look at all that meat. This is just a massive chunk of fish. Look at that big, beautiful piece of meat. I mean, just try not to look the fish in the eye. Just concentrate on the meat. And that meat is spectacular. Dip that in the curry, put it on the rice. Mm. Also, I'm gonna dig a bunch of these okra out of here. Okra, fantastic now with all this curry. That's a big spoonful. Mm. I love that pineapple. The pineapple is like the egg McMahon of this curry dish. Also, this rice, that is crazy. I'm just gonna take a big spoonful of curry, put it in my rice. 
Mm, I would come here just for that. This is such a nostalgic meal because in China, we, we never cut off the fish head. We always serve the fish whole. And when I was young, I really had no idea how to navigate the head. So when I would visit my grandmother, she would always take out the fish head meat and give it to me over a bowl of rice. And this really is a must try dish in Singapore. I'm so glad I tried it. And guys, if you are kind of skirmish about eating things with head still attached, and I know some of you are, and I am too, to a certain degree, there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are ever in Singapore, I would really encourage you to kind of push that aside and just give this dish a chance. Just treat it like you were eating a typical piece of fish. And I think you will really love it because there's so much good meat on the head. All right, one fish head down. Let's go eat some more. Now, if you think after eating a big bowl of fish head curry that I should be pretty much curried out, well, that's just not true because I'm about to eat another curry-based national dish of Singapore, laksa. Now, when it comes to laksa, there are probably hundreds of stores in Singapore that serves up a beautiful bowl of noodles. But I heard this place, Sungai Laksa, is one of the best. I came here at a really odd time, so there was really no line. But you could see where the line would have stretched if they utilized that robe area. And the laksa itself, it's pretty small. It's like a little bowl. And what's interesting is that when you get up there at the counter, it has a big sign that says no chopsticks. They chop their noodles so short that you don't need chopsticks. All you need is a spoon to eat this. And I figure, like, just, just one bowl of this that's not enough, that's why I got two. Because you know the old saying, good laksa comes in pairs. And inside this bowl, I see some fish tofu, some sprouts, some spice element, and what looks like some clam. The laksa soup is not overly thick, and right away what gets me is the aroma. It smells so incredibly enticing. Look at this, yeah, you can definitely pick up a lot of noodles with a spoon. It smells so coconutty. Oh. Oh, my first bowl of laksa in Singapore. You guys know how long I've been anticipating this? Ever since when I first came to New York, I, I had a bowl of laksa somewhere and I thought it was ridiculously good and someone told me, yeah, that sucks compared to what you can get in Singapore. Ever since then, I I've, been, I've been dreaming of coming to Singapore and trying a bowl of laksa and this did not disappoint. And I'll tell you guys, although this bowl kind of kind of looks simple, it's just full of wondrous elements. Hang on a second. Mm. Mm. First of all, you could bounce a quarter off that noodle. I mean, that noodle is as springy as you can get. The fish tofu is nice and chewy on the outside, beautifully tender right here. Super fresh little clams. And what I really like are the sprouts here. Again, bouncy noodle, nice crunchy texture of the sprouts, great contrast. And what ties all this together is just this beautiful, beautiful, spicy, coconutty, milky broth. I feel like forcing people to actually eat this uh, without chopsticks is ingenious because you really need to eat this with the soup and noodles at the same time. I, I really feel like you do. These noodles really don't grab onto the broth all that well. And if you eat these separately, I feel like you're really gonna miss out on, on a lot of the flavor that comes in the soup. That is so nice. They really just, just work so well together inside this bowl. I feel like I'm eating like Beethoven's Fifth Symphony right now. I mean, I'm, I'm eating this and there's music playing in my head. You know what I really love is, is after chewing this, that's when the curry coconut milk really hits you. And it packs such a ridiculously, just, just aromatic, ah, beautiful milky coconutty flavor. I mean, it's really a double whammy in this dish. Mm. I'm so glad I got two bowls. Mm. Oh, I almost want to hug this bowl, it's so good. Well, two bowls down and, and the craving is still there, but unfortunately, I got one more food stop to make, so I, I have to leave. But I'm gonna remember this, right here, right here, and right here. The last thing I'm eating today, another Singapore classic in Chinese is called zhou gu cha or bak ku te. This is a porky soup dish where pork ribs are, are stewed for a long time in this broth. And there are different variations of this. I think the Malaysian version is more herbally and the Singapore version is more about the pepper. And right now I'm at Liang Ki bak ku te and just by the smell of this, that is really herby. I mean, this, this kind of smells like Chinese medicine to me. The soup is cooked in a clay pot and it's burning hot. Don't touch this, okay? And on the inside, I see right away tofu skin, some greens, here are the ribs. 
Yeah, this baby was hiding. I'm feeling really excited right now because I love Chinese rib soup. I love it. Pork ribs stewed for a long time, it just turns magical. It's like a Disney concert going on in here. It's really simple. There's really not much in here. So soup, tofu skin, and just chunks of ribs. Wow, that's herby. I mean, I could smell that herb when they were bringing the tea over to me. I feel like if you never had Chinese herbal soup before, this might take some getting used to. But for me, like, I I've been eating Chinese medicine since I was a kid. My, my mom basically fed me that like candy. So sort of in a weird way, this is kind of like heartwarming for me. Let me try the ribs. Oh. Oh, that's a winner. You know what? This soup is really growing up. I'm actually really liking this. Also, they give me this chili pepper sauce. It looks like some soy sauce in there. It's supposed to dip the meat in there. Ooh, saucy. Mm, that's definitely sweet soy sauce. Wow, Thai chili, garlic. Pretty good for the ribs. I mean, the, the ribs themselves, because they've been stewed in Chinese herbs, the flavor is, is not very sharp. So a little chili does these ribs a lot of good. Also, the meat, pretty tender. Look at this. That just comes right off. Oh, it's a little slippery, but the meat right off the bones. That's pretty tender. You can tell this has been simmering for a long, long time. And these flavors are really familiar to me. Although it's the first time I had bak kut in Singapore, I feel like I had similar versions in China, definitely. But besides the flavors, this is really good for you. In Chinese, we call it yang, which sort of means to, to, to re-nurture yourself. So whenever people are kind of feeling weak, you're feeling a little tired, you're feeling a little achy, eating a bowl of soup like this is really good for you. Now what I'm kind of really curious about is what does the peppery version of this soup taste like? So let's go find out. Luckily, right down the street from Long Key, there's another bakgu tea place that sells the peppery version. Let's give this a try. As you can tell, the soup is much whiter, and it's really simple. Nothing is really in this tea except for garlic and the ribs. And you can see all this pepper inside this broth. And the ribs, they seem, okay, I feel like they're not that tender. <coughs> Ooh. Ooh, that is peppery. Ooh. Wow. That is filled with white pepper. Luckily for me, I'm a white pepper fanatic. So personally, the pepperier, the better. And right now, this is really good for me. This is really delicious. Right on my alley. I actually enjoy this a lot more than the herbary version because the soup on its own right now is not sweet at all. It's, it's just peppery and spicy. And that's just my preferred flavor profile. Let me try out one of these ribs. I mean, there's, they're big suckers. That's really good. That's really yum. And I wasn't really expecting that because they kind of look a little tough to me. But guys, check this out. See how easy the ribs come off the bones? You see that? This is really tender. Just using my chopsticks. Like, I'm squeezing this a little bit and the meat is already coming off. That's all sorts of tender. And you just take the piece of meat, put it in some soup. Ah. That's delicious. The meat is stewed so well. The flavor is kind of subtle, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, but as you chew it, it's just so good. I'm so glad I came down the street. I'm having so much fun with this dish right now. Fantastic bowl of soup. Either way, if you like more herbally or you like more peppery, there is a bakute out there for you. And personally, I'm really enjoying the peppery version. And again, this is the only pepper version of this I had here in Singapore. So I don't know how good this is compared to other people's, but I'll leave the address for this place in my description box. And maybe those of you who are in Singapore, come check it out and let me know how it compares. So I think that's it for this food day. I had the curry fish head, I had the laksa, I had the bakute. These are obviously really different dishes from each other, but it was so much fun and so satisfying to try out all these dishes that I guess they're all considered signature of must try dishes of Singapore. And of course, I've listed all the places I went to in my description box below. And guys, I also want to say that since I've been traveling around the world, I would love the opportunity to, to have a meetup with the locals, with you guys, and, and just thank you for, for watching and hang out with you a bit, take some pictures, eat some food. But it's really hard to announce meetups on YouTube. I got to film a video, I got to put it up. It's kind of a hassle. So I will be announcing meetups on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. So make sure you follow those accounts and they are all listed for you in my description box as well. And finally, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this particular episode is sponsored by Skillshare. And Skillshare is an online platform with over 15,000 courses, including photography, business, design, basically anything you want to learn. And these aren't just like professors from a university. These are people like you and me. So you can either take a class or you can give a class. So if you're really good at juggling, jump roping, I don't know, getting free upgrades to first class, you're an awesome sword maker, 
whatever skill you have, you can actually create courses and share it with other people on Skillshare. Let's see, what am I good at? I, I guess I'm really good at yeeting. It's not really a skill though. It's more like a gift. And a premium membership begins at around $10 a month for unlimited access. And they have a special offer for you guys. So for the first 700 people to sign up, you're gonna get a two month free trial. So guys, if you wanna know more about this, all the information is in my description box. Thank you all so much for watching. And until we eat again, I'll see you later.